you like to keep money in your accounts, cybersecurity cannot be ignored. Businesses are bombarded constantly every day from cyber criminals trying to attack and get access to information or client funds. And that's not going away. In fact, it's increasing. It's increasing in volume and it's increasing in sophistication. Uh, it's some area, especially in the financial services industry, where obviously assets are at stake. Every work we're hearing about things being hacked, people trying to be hacked, people trying to get into our data. And I think for smaller boutique firms like myself, uh, it's going to be a zero-one thing. There is, no, there is no spectrum of, gee, you're a smaller firm, so you only have to do so much. Now, I think we're protected a lot because our custodians have huge cybersecurity programs. So it's not like we're concerned about cl uh, client data or being able to move or manipulate or get to investments, per se, or get checks or get money. But it's that sensitive data, that client-sensitive data, that the social security numbers, the birth dates, the things that you could create a, a, a tax return with that we're trying to protect. And how do you protect the clients? Well, you almost have to help them protect their sel themselves these days. What we're seeing at Commonwealth is a lot of specific client email hacks or clients' social media accounts being taken over and potentially being used to their the, cr the criminal's advantage against them. So they moved away from trying to break through firewalls and break through antivirus to attacking another vulnerability, which is people. People are one of our biggest vulnerabilities and that's why we have to train and educate and prepare all of our staff to be ready for those types of attacks. So advisors really need to be educating clients on the risks how they should be putting things like dual factor authentication on their emails, how that they're not going to take check requests via email, especially if they're going to Mumbai. Change your password. That sounds absolutely stupid, but if people are getting repetitive forms of using passwords and not changing them, that's a problem. Uh, we're now working with our cloud provider to be able to limit access to the number of um, uh, units or computers that people can access data. That's about to become an auditable thing by FINRA where you're going to be able to show people how many touched a piece of data from how far and who were, who's on the other side of that data when it's being touched. A huge problem. Same thing with phones, iPads. Are they scrubbable? If you lose your iPad in the airport, can you call your cloud provider? Can you call a technology firm? And can they scrub that? Last area might be Try and keep nothing on your desktop computers. Try and have it all out in the cloud, have it in protected sources. What you often find is that advisors have excellent uh, policies, procedures for logical, physical security and data protection, but they get lax in the practice and enforcement of it. My number one recommendation is do what you already know and make sure it's, it gets done well, oversight it, review it, enforce it. We're going to be tested against the same standards that the large firms are. We can't afford to have one violation, one threat make it through, one, one person's data get out in the internet. Today we need to be just as competitive as they are. These are audible things, so with that being said, we've got to do this. It's a zero-one factor. We've got to be on our game.